So in the last lesson, we looked at these three trigonometric ratios, so ka and toa. Um, and what those ratios did is they connected the angle in a right angle triangle with the ratio of two of the side lengths. And depending on which two side lengths, you would use one of these three equations, which, which was really just one of the three different tables that it looks up the ratios in. So if opposite and hypotenuse were the important sides, then I would use the sine equation, which is really just the sine table. Adjacent and hypotenuse, cos. Opposite and adjacent, I would use the tan equation or the tan table. Today we're still looking at these same three uh, equations, the same three tables. Um, the only difference is now we're looking at the angle. So if you knew the two side lengths, could you figure out the angle? And the answer is yes. If I knew my two side lengths, if I knew opposite and hypotenuse, I would know what the ratio is between the side lengths. So then I could just go and I could look up in my table, I could look up backwards, kind of, okay, if this is my ratio, what's the angle that matches up with that? And I would have my angle. Now, let's do a quick example here. Uh, first one here says cos of theta, cos of some angle equals 0 0.9659. All right, I want to figure out what is that angle. Well, okay, so this is telling me that the ratio between the adjacent and hypotenuse lengths is 0 0.9659. So in this case, or so in other words, adjacent is a little bit smaller than hypotenuse, if I was to get that fraction. Um, but what's the angle? Okay, well, if I had my table, now I, I don't expect you to do it with the table, but I'll just show you this first. If I had my table, I'm looking for where co I'm looking at cos, and I want the cos ratio to be 0.9659. So I'm just going to look down my cos ratios. I'm looking for 9659. Oh, here we go. And that ratio happens when I have an angle of 15 degrees. Okay, so that tells me the angle was uh, 15 degrees. Now, it gets pretty tedious looking in these tables, especially when you start looking at, at, uh, at decimal angles, right? 15.1 or something like that. Um, so you can use your calculator to do it. But when you're doing this on your calculator, all your calculator is doing is it's just looking for that ratio in the table and matching it up with an angle. All right, so it's not doing that, that cos button in your calculator is, is not doing anything fancy other than looking things up in a table. Okay, uh, so how would we do this on your calculator? Well, when you use the regular cos button, you're plugging in an angle, getting a ratio. If you want to go the opposite way around, you have to use an inverse cos button. Um, and that one looks like cos negative 1. Um, so on this calculator, it's, it's under a different uh, tab. But on your calculator at home, you probably have to get to it by pressing the second button in the top left of your calculator. So top left of your calculator is probably a little button that says second. And then if you press second and then cos, it should give you this cos negative one. So second cos, it gives you this cos negative one. That's what we want. Uh, and then we plug in 0 0.9659, and that's telling you the inverse cos, meaning we're giving you the ratio and you're giving us back the angle, uh, comes out to 15 degrees. Okay, that's what we expected. Uh, once again, make sure that calculator is in degree mode as well. So just check that, make sure you can get that. Uh, if you need help with your calculator, just uh, send me an email. All right, we can do the same thing here. Uh, next one, sine. Sine of what angle gives you a ratio of 0.9994? Okay, we'll use our calculator this time. Uh, okay, so I'll go to my calculator. Um, I had sine, so I need my second, second sine to get my, my inverse sine. Because right, in this case, I want to find the angle, right? Anytime you're trying to get the angle is when you'll use that inverse. 
So inverse sine of 0 0.9994. That ratio shows up when the angle is 88 degrees. Right, 88 degrees. All right, um, so we'll go through and actually use that to uh, to solve a problem now. All right, um, so first thing, we're given this triangle. It's a right angle triangle, so we're allowed to use the Sokotoa equations. Um, first thing we do is label our triangle, just like the last the last lesson. Uh, let's see here. My longest side across from the 90 is the hypotenuse. This is the angle we're interested in, so it would point to the opposite side. And I don't care about adjacent. I don't have adjacent. I don't want to find it. Uh, those are the important sides. Okay, so then I'm going to, top of my page, I'm going to write uh, so katoa to help me remember my equations. And I want to choose the equation that has opposite and hypotenuse because right, those are the important ones here. Opposite and hypotenuse, I'm looking at the last two letters. Opposite and hypotenuse, uh, that matches with sine. Right, that's the only one that has opposite and hypotenuse in it. Okay, so I copied that equation down. Sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. All right, um, so at this point, I'm going to plug in everything I know. Uh, I don't know my angle, so that's just going to stay as sine theta. But I do my, know my opposite is a 20. And my hypotenuse is a 25. Okay. Um, now remember, there always has to be something in your sine, right? In this case, I don't know the angle, but I would never just write sine on its own. It's sine of something, right? In this case, some unknown angle. Um, now I have an equation. The angle is the only thing I don't know, so I should be able to solve it now. Uh, let's start by simplifying this guy. 20 divided by 25 is 0 0.8. At this, uh, at this point, I want to get my theta by itself. So I need to get rid of the sine. And you can do that by doing the opposite of a sine, which is a sine inverse, a sine negative 1. So when you're solving these, you can think of it like this, right? I want to move the sine over. The opposite of a sine is a sine negative 1, just like the opposite of a square is a square root. All right, um, so that leaves you with uh, theta just on its own, right? Sine negative one, sine cancel, that disappears. Uh, I have theta equals the inverse sine of 0.8. Or in other words, right, what angle gives you a ratio of 0.8? So we go to our calculators, we plug that in. Uh, the inverse sine of 0.8, right? So second sine to get that inverse sine. Inverse sine of 0 0.8 gives me uh, 53.1 degrees. All right, so that angle was 53.1 uh, degrees. And I just rounded to 53. All right, so when you're tackling these problems, it's almost exactly the same as the last lesson. Uh, the only difference is that now it's the angle that you don't know. And when you need to solve for an angle, you have to do that inverse sign, which is just telling the calculator to go the opposite direction in that table. Find the angle instead of finding the ratio.